Hi, I'm Kristen, Technical Program Manager at Scout24, and I'm here today with Glenn from AWS. Hey, Kristen. Good to be here. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> it's always fun to uh, come spend time with the Scout24 team. Cool. So what does an architect do at Amazon? That's a, that's a really good question. You know, for myself, I'm like kind of the lead solutions architect for AWS globally. And so you know, I, I, have, uh, I think it's the best job in AWS. I get to work with uh, companies ranging from startups to big enterprises who you know, are at a very different part of their IT journey through to uh, public sector and governments. And I do this all around the world. So I spend a lot of time on the plane. I, I spend a lot of time with customers and you know, understanding what are their, their challenges and what are the new problems they're wanting to solve in the new world? It's you know, big technologies like AI and ML mm -hmm. and uh, you know, kind of infrastructure as code and uh, modern application development and digital transformation. It's just so exciting to see what people are, are doing and actually how it's transforming the way we, we work and live uh, as individuals. That is cool. How does AWS go about creating architectural best practices for, for, for itself and for its uh, customers? Yeah, so you know, for ourselves, we're constantly looking at the operational excellence of uh, you know, how we manage the services that we have and how our customers are using it. And then we work with customers and we've actually created what we call the Well Architect Framework, which is a, a body of knowledge that's split across five sort of pillars, such as, you know, for example, security and uh, operational excellence, reliability, for example, performance, optimization. And, you know, we've made that public. So for our customers, you can look at this well after the framework. We actually released it as a tool in uh, December, actually, reinvent last year. So as a customer of AWS, you can actually apply the same question and answers to that uh, your workloads can actually get a score and see well how are you on performance versus security where are there areas that you could optimize for example so it's a really powerful tool and we have customers doing that we're constantly updating that as we learn you know uh, new learnings and that can be from how you know, new services are being used to uh, new observations we have around how people are using their combination of services and you know, some of the new ways there are for example is customers look at running more and more mission critical workloads on AWS how does that look like in a, like a regional deployment? We might be running that same application for multiple regions around the world so you have true global availability. Uh, it gets pretty cool. Yeah, so interesting that you said uh, that people are using this well architecture framework in their companies. What kind of feedback are you getting from people about, about this framework? Yeah, no, they're, they're loving it because yeah. it's, it gives them a body of kind of questions and answers. And there's actually, when you go through the tool, there's like little videos actually for every single question kind of explaining what the remediation action would be for that. For example, you get a really nice report. And so IT teams are liking that in terms of they can show, for example, where there may be skills gaps within a team and that they, where they can focus training and certification uh, out there. Uh, IT leaders are loving it because it gives them like a health score as to how their organization is going. So it's really nice to go back to the CFO sometimes and say, you know, look, uh, we're doing a really great job as we're migrating to the cloud. You know, one, one of the big benefits I think people don't realize they get when they move to AWS is it's giving you a level of transparency into your IT uh, resources that you've just never been able to have before because every single thing is kind of measured and monitored and reported on. Well, architecture now takes up to the design decisions uh, as well. Um, and interestingly, we, we, we actually use Well Architect now where some of our internal engineering teams, when they launch new services, they're using that same Well Architect framework and applying that to the services as well. So it's being used not only internally to AWS, but by customers. It's exactly the same. Thing. So you touched a little bit on the impact cloud transformation can have on a business. So what do you see as the impact on businesses when they, when they adopt cloud usage? Yeah, so as customers start to adopt uh, cloud, there's really kind of three areas that I think about that they're changing. The first one, probably the biggest one actually, is the cultural change that happens. You know, as you start looking at things like DevOps, for example, and you know, a lot of companies structure their IT teams around the technologies. I had the database engineering team, I had a network engineering team, I had you know, maybe the Windows operating system team, Linux engineering, uh, you know, storage, etc. But that's just not how businesses work. And as you move towards a cloud model and you move towards application stacks and DevOps, you start having kind of teams that are focused on business problems and business outcomes. Uh, you also start undoing things like some of the IT management change advisory boards because you want to encourage this agile development practices. And that requires a lot of culture, both at the leadership level but also from bottom up. Uh, so that's culture. Uh, you have to change the organizational structures. You see the reporting lines and teams uh, 
being changed. And then third, you have the technology itself, which is actually, I hate to say it as a techie geek, but uh, it's actually the smallest component of the three. Yeah. Culture and organizational structure is, is massive. You know, even simple things like uh, you know the financial approval process right. is fundamentally different in the cloud, right? Because you're not doing like a big five-year contract that's got a fixed price. That is in some ways is actually easy to get through because that's how the finance systems are, are, are you know, kind of being right at work. Whereas in the cloud, you're paying for what you use. It's dynamic. It can change day to day, and it evolves over time. You constantly look at you know, we can do this to help customers, and that can have different impacts on the resources. Yeah, we're definitely very, very different way. Yeah, we're definitely seeing that here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you talked to us a bunch today about AI. So you mentioned in the past that AI won't steal jobs. Um, yeah. It will transform industry with new jobs. Can you tell us a little bit about that? But I really think you know, AI is about augmenting us as humans. It's the yeah. best way to think about it. It's, it's, it's taking away, there are a lot of things we do that you know don't really add a lot of value and, and this gets even worse as the volumes of information that we deal with and the ability to especially when you think about the connected internet for example where you've got all these devices just feeding us even more information and you know for scale 24 you know, as we start getting smarter cars to be massive data feeds coming off those what do we do with that you know having humans trolling through vast amounts of information looking for those patterns and insights it's just not a fun job to do uh, but being able to take those insights and then apply them to your customers and apply them to the business, that's really involved. So I see AI will help with that heavy lifting and kind of that the boring work of working with data, but it's going to be humans that are using our creative minds to think about how those insights can be applied to a business. Uh, and then if you look at that across wider industries, you, know, you look at healthcare, for example, having nurses with far better informed uh, intelligence data. Doctors when you go in and you're sick and you've got wearable devices and they can see, look, actually you've been running out of fever for quite a while. Uh, you know, what your heart rate is doing, if you've got irregular heartbeat, if you look at these things, all this is just more data coming in. The machines are going to be really good at the diagnostics and patch range. But I think you know, humans, uh, we have a big role still to play for quite a while. Uh, you know, in my experience, I'd much prefer to be sitting here talking to you face to face than doing this through a chat window or on Twitter, for example. You know, I, I think humans, we have a, an innate desire to want to interact and, and connect at a personal level with people, and that's going to continue even in business. Well, you're talking to me, definitely me. So thank you so much for taking the time. No, thank you so much.